The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord, and my reward is with my God. And now the Lord says, Who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him? For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and His Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers, kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord, who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. John saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, he on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walked by, he exclaimed, look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? And they said to him, Rabbi, which is translated means teacher, Where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is to translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, who wonderfully creates and yet more wonderfully restores the dignity of humanity by the incarnation of God's very self in Jesus Christ. Amen. This is one of my favorite gospel stories. Actually, we'll hear this from a different perspective next week with Matthew's telling. But for now, John allows us to catch a glimpse of the first two disciples and my patron saint as a priest, Andrew. 
There's something about the presence of Jesus right from the very beginning that is so captivating, so penetrating, so engaging, so compelling. John the baptizer talks about it, and seemingly these two disciples of John somehow now recognize it as the movement of the Holy Spirit. But how do we? How do we recognize the movement of the Spirit? I believe it's to accept the invitation we hear that is offered, the invitation to come and see, come and behold the good news we hear. But what does this mean? Is it really this simple? I think the answer is, is even closer than we think. We need only remember a basic tenet from our childhood about crossing the street. What was that? Stop, look, go. Although this sounds horribly simplistic, I found this to be true. To behold the light, the love, the gift of God, to see the Lamb of God at work, we must stop, look, and go. Stop. All too often we're rushing, reacting, seemingly restless and searching for the next best thing, as if what we behold is not enough. When Jesus noticed the two disciples of John were suddenly following him, Jesus asked them the direct question, what are you looking for? It was to stop. That question is still being asked, even in its simplicity. It penetrates us directly. We are in such pursuit of to often find more complicated answers. And here Jesus speaks to us directly. To stop is to breathe, get quiet around ourselves, and ask, what are we looking for? It's to listen for God's still small voice. And when we stop, we're ready to look. Jesus invites us to a new and fuller life and change our whole world with the direct invitation, come and see. Are we ready to look? We, we may think this is too simple, but I confess this is how I've also experienced this incredible invitation of Jesus. There have been people who have simply asked me to come and see, come and experience God, but not just alone, but with them in community. And when I look back at my own faith journey, it started as so many of us as a young child and then kept being nurtured, reminded, affirmed, and even challenged, come and see, grow. Each time it was also an opportunity to broaden how I saw and even define myself and allowed God to be. Come and see is an invitation and affirmation is also, I believe, a challenge to always keep actively sharing the gift of relationship that takes us beyond ourselves and changes everything we're about. Isn't that at the heart of everything we're about, to change everything by knowing Jesus? And if we stop and we look, we are ready to do something extraordinary, which is go. Have you ever considered what faith compels us to let go of? I have found that faith eventually shatters our worldly certainties that we have built up for ourselves, usually revealing our own self-serving desires rather than God's yearning for us. Or the flip side, the labels other people's place on us. It's still not listening or responding to God's yearning for us. So to take this invitation of Jesus seriously, to come and see, we must come to realize that this new faith will replace our old ways of looking at ourselves, our neighbors, and the world. Now, I wish I could say that I learned this very fast, very young, But it is a growing process, and one that calls me to live into it as a disciple, a way of life, a focus, a priority. Not only did these two disciples of John the baptizer have to be resolute with what they sought, stopping and being present to see and behold, but also with what they were willing to leave or give up, to risk themselves by leaving something known or secure of one community for something they could not fully see or comprehend yet, but something they trusted nonetheless. This, I believe, is what we have in common with these first inquirers of Jesus. We, as disciples, leave the certainties and comforts of the place we create or have clung to out of nostalgia in order to allow God to be fully present, that is, to recreate us as a new people over and over again. If we, like the supposed other disciples of John the Baptizer, cannot release 
our past, our fears, our uncertainties, our anxieties. If we cannot recognize this new calling, we miss the new creation and the invitation to be formed, reformed. But what about Andrew? The good news is about what is here and now. God is still speaking, still at work in the world, in the community, and through each of us. Andrew is my patron saint, because what does Andrew do but what we have in this story today? Andrew brings the disciple, another person, to that encounter with Jesus and steps away so God can be at work. That's what I think is all about our life as disciples, as ministers. We have an incredible story to share, and the best chapters are still to be written. To take seriously the call to come and see is to realize what we have been entrusted with is good news to share with others. And I believe that God wants to know what you will include in that story. It starts with the same excitement that Andrew had. We have found the Messiah. How we make this known is now up to us at this time, here and in our world, with what we share. Amen. Prayers of the People, Form 3, are found on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who commend themselves to our prayers, especially remembering this week, Bob, Jeff, Jacob, Jim, Lily, Lynn, the Longo family, Mary, Paul, Stephanie, and all those affected by natural disasters and human tragedies, especially remembering the people of Ukraine at this time. We pray for the first responders and the aid and relief efforts that continue there and around the world, and especially for everyone affected by the coronavirus, and all others who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed, especially Carl, eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. We pray especially for peace in our homes and around the world, remembering those who have lost their homes and families to violence here or abroad, as well as those who serve and protect our own freedom especially Harrison, Matt, Becky, Jennifer, Steve, Philip, Perrin, and Tony, for their safety as well as the just use of the power that is placed in their hands. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. I invite your own petitions and thanksgivings offered at this time. Let us remember and pray for our pastoral care team and Stephen ministry. Caring God, thank you for how you call us to bring your light of hope and love to others. Continue to guide us in our care, especially with our Stephen ministers. Give those who feel they or someone close to them would benefit from a care receiving relationship, the courage to ask for a Stephen minister to walk alongside them. By your presence and Holy Spirit, continue to strengthen our Stephen ministers and leaders to provide the Christian caregiving that you have prepared for them to do. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of the heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever, amen.